Welcome back. The January 6th committee postponed the hearing that was scheduled for this week, but the committee's work is far from over as we head towards the midterms. Let's talk about it more tonight with Gunnar Raymer from the Republican Accountability Project, who's up late with me tonight here on The Final Five. Uh, Gunnar, we've had folks from uh, the Republican Accountability Project on the show before, but for people who don't know who you are and what you do, what, what has been the goal of, of your group? Yeah, so we launched post January 6th. We're a bunch of Republicans, former Republicans and conservatives uh, who cannot stand what happened on January 6th, who cannot stand the, the repeated election lies by Donald Trump and, and those around him. But we also recognize that the party right now, sadly, has been taken over by Donald Trump and people that uh, aspire to the MAGA America First agenda election denialism, but we're pushing back and fighting back against that. Are you worried that, that some people have conflated the idea of just by by virtue of you uh, speaking out and saying, hey, we don't like what happened on January 6th, that somehow your, your bona fides as, as a conservative or as a Republican are no longer? Yeah, I, you know, I'm a registered Republican. I consider myself someone, you know, who is conservative, but I can't think of anything less against the Constitution and less uh, about being a strong conservative than trying to overturn a free and fair election. And that's exactly where a majority of Republican candidates at all levels of government across the country are at. And I think that's really disappointing. So if people want to, you know, label me or our group rhinos, well, listen, I think that we, uh, we stand for the Constitution. I can't think of anything more conservative than that. As we look at the January 6th committee, which uh, came together after January 6th, and there was a push for a bipartisan commission uh, until there wasn't any more, by likely virtue of the former president saying, I don't want this. Uh, but you do have bipartisan representation on, on this committee here. There have been some hearings. There was a bit of a layoff, though. And I'm curious if, if you think the layoff between between hearings, and we're still waiting for this next one to be scheduled, uh, do you think that, that maybe the public has is either lost interest or maybe the focus was lost along the way? Yeah, that remains to be seen, and it's an open question. But I want to speak, you know, we do focus groups all the time. And during the, during the January 6th committee hearings and shortly after the January 6th committee hearings, uh, we noticed an impact within groups of, with Trump supporters or Trump voters. They voted for Trump in 16. They voted for Trump in 20. And, you know, we asked them, hey, do you want to see Trump run again in 2024? And usually pre-hearing, uh, the answer, at least half of the group would say yes, and being very enthusiastic about Donald Trump running again in 2024. But, after, but during and after the January 6th committee hearings, we'd ask the same question with a similar uh, type of voter, and, and almost none of them wanted to see Donald Trump run again. And it was making an impact uh, among uh, Trump supporters. And it remains to be seen if that happens going forward. You know, that came at a time with Donald Trump not being in the news so much. But, you know, this is we're in an environment now post mar lago raid. Uh, and, and Donald Trump is in the news more. So we will see what happens. But we did notice uh, an impact uh, during and, and shortly after the January 6th committee hearings. There was so much video that came out, and many of our, our my colleagues here at Fox 5 were on the ground. They were at the Capitol on January 6th. They saw a lot ha happen with their own eyes. But as we saw some of this video and some of the evidence that was presented during these hearings that, that we didn't see before, and then you hear from people uh, like, for example, Officer Michael Fanone, uh, who had said, hey, I voted for, for, for Donald Trump in the past. I, I was a Trump supporter, but then draws the line directly at, at that rhetoric, his rhetoric, towards what happened to him and more than 100 police officers who were injured uh, back on January 6th. I mean, there are things that have come out here that in spite of the fact that people will be quick to say Cassidy Hutchison was, was, had ulterior motives or something along those lines, there, there are voices out there that, that have not been heard. Yeah, that's right. The January 6th uh, committee hearings have been, uh, they've been brilliant and they've, sh uh, you know, shown uh, uh, to the American people a lot of new information and presented a lot of new facts. And I think that's why even among Trump supporters, they feel uncomfortable about what happened on January 6th. And that's why they were looking around for these Trump without the baggage kinds of candidates like Ron DeSantis. I want to be clear about these Trump supporters. It's not like they didn't like Donald Trump anymore. Uh, they didn't want him to be the leader of the party. No, they very much still like Donald Trump, but it was making an electoral impact as these voters were sort of playing this armchair politics game of, hey, who's the candidate that can beat Democrats in 2024. But also, uh, you know, what this new information has revealed, you know, turns off swing voters. They're completely repelled by a Donald Trump uh, kind of candidate or Donald Trump himself. And the idea of, you know, January 6th being back in the news for them made them very uncomfortable and hurt uh, support for Donald Trump or even other Republicans across the country who may have been involved in January 6th, like Pennsylvania gubernatorial candidate Doug Mastriano. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, last question, I've about a minute left here. What do you want to see come out of this, th these hearings? Once we get a report, I, I mean, are you looking for are you looking for charges? Are you looking for this to have an electoral impact? I mean, what's what what's the end game if we have a committee that doesn't have that that power to issue charges? Yeah. So what Liz Cheney and the rest uh, of them have done on the January sixth committee is. Uh, prosecute the case against Donald Trump and those around him who enabled him, who enabled uh, the Jan what happened on January 6th and all the election lies. And what I hope to see it, uh, in the future hearing, or if there's multiple hearings that the January 6th committee has, is this continued uh, uh, pr prosecuting the case against Donald Trump and those around him. Uh, that's That would be my main hope going forward. Gunnar Raymer from the Republican Accountability Project. Thanks for taking some time to talk to us tonight. Thanks for having me. And the final five is back right after this.